Hey everyone, Dev with Crime Hive, and in this true crime video, we're talking about missing hiker Esther Dingley. You're looking at a photo here of her and her boyfriend Dan Colgate. They have this camper van and they've been living this van life type of lifestyle, and, and they've been doing it for several years all around Europe. And I mentioned that because she's gone missing while hiking. And the reason I'm mentioning this story is is a lot of a lot of police or other authorities in both France and in Spain believe that it may not be an accident. There there are some suspicious aspects to this case. So we're going to talk about that. Before I do, if you like tr these kind of true crime videos, just be sure to subscribe and that way you can get some updates to this video and others that I'm currently covering. So let's talk more about this case here and what's what's going on here. So you're looking at again Esther, Dan, and they, you know, just to give you a little context on them, they had this van life lifestyle. They've got a blog here you're looking at. You know, they adopted these five dogs right here that they live with, and they just had this outdoor adventure, right? It's just uh, they they left their jobs to in pursuit of this of this type of lifestyle. And we've learned a few things here uh, about them. You know, though it looks like quite the amazing amazing uh, lifestyle and so forth they they both also suffered from depression and they actually talk about that openly and i mention that because we still don't really know what's happened to esther by all accounts it seems like she was in good spirits she had just climbed through the pyrenees mountains where she went missing and it didn't seem like you know there was any reason for her to feel hopeless or or anything like that she she seemed to be you know, have this plan and, and she was really enjoying herself during that time. So we did know though there was an interview back in April with both of them where they, they, they were interviewed in this interview in April where they talked about how they both had emotional issues that they needed resolving and they said that, you know, we've learned traveling doesn't really solve any problems. It, it, it just changes them. The biggest challenges have been emotional. And so that's what they said in that interview. Now, a couple things we learn though is on November 19th, we know that uh, that that Esther's actually in the Pyrenees Mountains, and she takes some photos, and she's documenting this journey about ten nineteen a.m. on Facebook. So we know. And before I get into that Facebook post here, let me just show you what her journey kind of looks like. So there's her and Dan right there. A couple photos of them. I like to pull up this map here on Daily Mail because so she really starts on November sixteenth, and this is really recent, right? Uh, she goes out to Beneske in her camper van. She leaves her van and she just goes on this journey through the Pyrenees Mountains. And as you can see, it's through, you've got France and Spain. So it's right on the border. And so you've got French and Spanish authorities involved in this search for her. And they've done several searches and have not been able to locate her or see any, any sign of her. Now, during this journey, she makes a Facebook post on November 19th. And so I'll pull that up here where there's some pictures of her that that, uh, that she documented. And I'll get out of that just to show you the post. So she posts these photos and she talks about, you know, that there was there was bad weather. Um, it was a mixed day. You know, there was there was ice and snow and rain. And, and she was kind of talking about this experience and, and then how she was somewhat doubting herself. But the, but she gets she gets there. You know, she makes it to the top and she gets really excited about this. And, you know, she's seeing a rainbow and, you know, so she's happy again and, and things are great. Now, here's here's one of the suspicious aspects to this case. She mentions she meets this fellow hiker who police are calling this mystery man, right? Because this person may have uh, the, the clue as to where she is or could potentially be involved in, in, in where she's at on a criminal level. And so what she talks about is she had this option of staying at this great cabin and even had a mattress uh or go down with this fellow hiker and getting getting a lift so she decides that he would take her with her up the valley so that she could continue her planned tour to another refuge or back to the camper a couple things on this that i've learned through some of the articles police absolutely want to find this man they haven't been able to they think that he may have dropped her off uh but but it's possible that she may have gone with this person on another journey right or uh, something sinister may have happened. Now, what's interesting is police believe that she's not on this mountain anymore. They've done several searches. And I'm going to pull up 
what it looks like, the terrain, just so you guys have a good idea of what this looks like. But they've done a lot of searching, right? And according to authorities and all these search crews and, and people looking for her, the, the terrain is pretty flat and open. Not necessarily flat, but it's open where you can find someone if they were missing. It would be fairly easy. Now, um, I'll show you what this kind of looks like just to give you an idea. And this is when they were actively searching her. So you can see that there's ice and snow in certain areas, but there's not all throughout the mountains. So they've searched extensively and have not been able to come up with anything. They're, they're quite convinced that they would have found something or some sign of her by now. And then they ended up finding this other person who was not Esther. So I just wanted to show you that, kind of what it looks like. And the reason I play that too is, you know, there there was some inclement weather. Uh, this Moving into this weekend, so, you know, the filming of this video is Sunday. So we know that a storm rolled in Thursday night and, and it got worse and it actually prevented further search efforts. And so, uh, you know, more snow coverage and that sort of thing. But before that, it wasn't necessarily so bad to where, uh, you, you know, there would be really a lot of concern as, as to her, you know, getting getting caught up on this mountain and being in this life or death situation. So they don't believe that. Now, a few things here, a couple notes that I want to point out. She ends up taking a selfie photo on November 22nd at about 4 p.m. And it was from her WhatsApp. And she sends this to her boyfriend, Dan. Well, no trace of her since. We have no idea what's happened to her since. And I'll show you that photo in here as well. And so you got some photos of her and Dan again, just so you guys have a better idea. This is the photo that she took though. And this is the last known whereabouts, you know, this, this area right here as she was going to go and make her descent down. So did she, did she meet up with this mystery man again? Did this mystery man help her? Did they go off together? Police have been trying to locate her through phone records, through, through phone pinging. They've had a very difficult time in that. Uh, it's possible her phone could be broken, could be disabled, or could have been taken, they believe. And so they're having a very difficult time finding those pinged locations from her phone. And and so I'm making this video too to reach out. If you happen to be in, been in this area or where in the nearby whereabouts of this area, definitely contact authorities because we cannot find Esther. Couple things that I just learned though, before I even made this video, we're already getting some updates. There is some new information. And I recently learned that there was a um, another sighting. This was actually the last sighting. Uh, it was apparently an Olympic skier saw her onto the summit and uh, you know when she was continuing onto the summit and was asking her him for fruit. So this, this Olympic skier apparently was so this is this Olympic skier right here. His name's Marty Vigo del Arco. And apparently he was with his girlfriend. They met up. They spoke with Esther for a little while. Um, she asked for some fruit. And then she kind of continued on. This was about an hour before she reached that summit. And she made that selfie photo. So um, police have obviously spoken with this person. No new leads. Uh, seems like you know he's been cooperative. And then also, boyfriend um, has also been cooperative and hasn't. You know, Dan has not. Um, he's been interviewed multiple times, and there's 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 no sign that he's not cooperating there. So we we know that they they're still kind of at they're they're really there's no fresh leads really at this point, other than they think that she could possibly be kidnapped. They think that there could be something criminal here. Now, one other thing that I want to mention about this journey here. Uh, a couple other things, just a couple important dates. So Dan, after not being able to, to you know, get in touch with, with Esther, he reports her missing on the twenty fourth. Okay, this was just one day before her trip was due to end, right? And then by the twenty sixth, you've got the Spanish and French authorities involved in the search. By now, uh, December first, bad weather comes in, storms are called off, you know, uh, because of the snow and so forth. So. Uh, that's that's really what I wanted, wanted to point out in this video. Uh, again, you know, there's not not a whole lot else. Um, if something else comes in, I will certainly 
make another video about that and we're just hoping that she'll be found. If you guys have any new information as it's coming in, please comment below. Let me know your thoughts about this case. Let me know what you think. If you think it's uh, maybe weather related, you think it could have a mental health aspect to this, or if you think there that maybe something sinister or criminal has happened, let me know your thoughts in this video. Again, this is Dev with Crime Hive, and we'll see you in another video soon. Thanks.